Hey, brother. Ben, do you know who is conspicuously absent from the Harry Potter books? Harry's family. Now, yes, I know his parents were murdered. That's sort of the whole setup for like the entire story. But it's still weird that in seven books, his grandparents aren't mentioned like at all. What happened to him? How old were his parents when they died? What, 20, 21? And all of their parents were dead by then? Wow, that is some very bad luck. Wait, 21 though, what, what did they do? How did they have that like huge pile of gold? How rich was Harry? Then, much like Quidditch, the wizard currency system is absolutely bonkers. Now, in case you don't remember, and I don't blame you if you don't because it is absolutely ridiculous, wizards have three coins, galleons, sickles, and canuts. Problem number one, right out of the gate, they pronounce what is clearly supposed to be a silent K in canuts. Are you kidding me? Did nobody can know what they were doing? And for a society that doesn't teach its population math, they have made the value system of their money completely completely confusing. It's 29 canuts in a sickle and 17 sickles in a galleon. That means it's 493 canuts in a galleon. So a single canut is worth 0 0.002 galleons. For reference, a penny compared to a dollar is 1 100th or 0 0.01. That means by comparison, a canut is five times more worthless to a galleon than a penny is to a dollar. Yeah, and people complain about the US not being on the metric system. But to be fair, galleons are worth a little bit more than dollars, so it's not an exact comparison. A galleon is worth about $7.35 in US dollars. Those numbers come from the prices listed on the Fantastic B and where to find them books you could actually physically purchase. And a full breakdown of all that can be found at the Harry Potter Wikia. I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out. Either way though, it means in US dollars, a canut is still only worth about two cents. So yeah, basically worthless. And really, sickles aren't much better. At 17 sickles to a galleon, a single sickle is worth 0 0.058 of a galleon. In the United States, that would be worth about 46 cents. So imagine, if you will, if all of our currency in the United States consisted of a penny, a half dollar, and a $7 bill. Man, that would make things easy. Can you imagine trying to buy something like a $13 item with wizarding money? It would come out to one galleon, 12 sickles, and seven canuts, and you get half a canut in change. And you can't tell because we use jump cuts on this channel, but it took us a whopping 50 seconds to figure out the change on that exchange. And can you imagine how heavy it would be carrying all that gold around all the time? I mean, screw a wallet. You need like a whole knapsack, and that can't be good for your knees. Again, and to be fair though, it's not like muggle money and wizarding money are really that comparable. And muggle money doesn't always make that much sense either. Well, in terms of denominations, it does, but more in terms of how it exists or what it's worth or why it's worth anything. The short answer is our money is worth something because we believe it's worth something. This is called the fiat system of money and basically means there's no physical commodity backing up the value of our money like gold or silver. Instead, the value comes from the government declaring that this currency is worth something and then the value is determined by the relationship between supply and demand. However, this has only been the case in the United States since since 1971, which seems shockingly recent. Until then, we operated on something called the gold standard. That meant that the value of our money was literally backed by gold, and the government couldn't print more money than they had gold in the vault. And that you could literally walk into a bank and give them a dollar and demand its value in gold back to yourself, which I kind of I'm sad we missed out on. But those are the days of the past. Now we just have money that's worth its value in faith instead of gold. But it makes me wonder, why did we ever choose gold to begin with? Well, besides being really pretty and sparkly, the answer is science. Here's the reasoning. After you decide that your country needs something for currency, you need to decide what that currency will be. And it should probably be naturally occurring so no one can just go manufacture it. Naturally occurring means it has to be an element. And obviously you'd want it to be solid, so that wipes out all of the gases and or liquids. You don't want it to be radioactive, reactive, or corrosive. And you need it to be rare enough that it's difficult to find, but not so rare that it's impossible to find. That narrows the entire periodic table down to five elements, rhodium, palladium, silver, platinum, 
and gold. Of those five, silver tarnishes easily, rhodium and palladium were only discovered in the 1800s, and platinum's melting point is so high that earlier generations could not have effectively melted it down into actual currency. What leaves us with the winner, gold. And that brings us back to Harry Potter, which continues to be nuts. Sorry, to nuts. No, actually just nuts that time. Wizards definitely don't use the gold standard because well, they use actual gold rather than coins or bills that represent gold. They appear also to be on a fiat system of some sort, but they just happen to use as currency the metals we muggles consider to be the most valuable, but I would bet their reasoning is far different from ours. If I had to guess, I would bet gold, silver, and bronze all fall under Gamp's elemental laws of transfiguration, meaning they can't be created out of nothing, nor can they be duplicated. That is, unless you have a sorcerer's stone. But honestly, who needs one? I mean, the exchange rate with dollars is so bananas, I cannot believe wizards are not taking advantage of this. Seriously, trade in your $7 for a galleon, then go sell that galleon for its actual weight in gold to a muggle. A gram of gold, by the way, is worth $40, so you can probably take more than $40 back to the bank, exchange it for more galleons, and then rinse and repeat until rich. Come on, Seamus, your dad's a muggle. Mum's a witch? You start working that exchange fraud, pff, you don't even need to go to Hogwarts, man. By the way, it only took me about 20 seconds to figure out how to exploit exchange fraud, which is way less time than it took me to figure out the change on the transaction earlier. So how rich is Harry then? Well, extremely. But it's hard to be exact because even within the books, the value of a galleon seems to just like go all over the place. In one scenario, Molly takes out a single galleon from their vault to buy all the Weasley school supplies. And then in another scenario, Harry drops 30 galleons like it's nothing on three pairs of omnioculars for him, Ron, and Hermione to use for a couple hours one day. Although maybe it should have been a little bit longer if Crumb could do basic math and realize he didn't need to catch that snitch just yet, but then again, they don't appear to teach math to the kids in the wizarding world, so whatever. And how did Harry's parents get all that gold? Well, their jobs are never really revealed in the books, but honestly, I don't think they really did much work for it. By all accounts, they were pretty much just right in the Order of the Phoenix after they graduated school, and at that point, James was already rich. An article on Pottermore actually outlines the Potter family history, and it turns out it was James James's father, who actually made the family fortune by creating Sleek Easy's hair potion. He later sold the company for great profit, and then him and his wife died of dragon pox shortly after James married Lily. They never actually got to meet their grandson, Harry, who, ironically, like his father, had untamable hair. And there you go, Ben. Money in the wizarding world is just crazy. But my question for you and everyone else is, have you ever spent an unusually large amount of something on something stupid like omnioculars? Let me know down in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! Guys, yes, thanks for watching this video. Please leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter videos. If you want to learn how to fix Quidditch, you can check out Ben's video on that right here. Or if you want to learn about how Dumbledore had his own horror Crux, you can check out that video right here. But Ben, that's everything I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, bro.